Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, Nick DiVirgilio sits down with Ben Calhoun from the band Citizen Way. He's the lead singer and the songwriter, talks about how the band developed, the three S's and the F that go into songcraft, and lots more. Check this out. How you doing, everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here. Very special guest in studio today from the band Citizen Way. Ben Calhoun, nice to see you here, man. You too, Nick. Glad Welcome to, to Sweetwater. Buddy. Thanks for coming. I know you're traveling through town, getting back to your home in Nashville, and it's your yeah. first time here to Sweetwater, so... But I know you haven't seen the whole place yet, but what right. do you think so far, just kind of walking through the front door? Well, I, I've always loved Sweetwater. I've been a customer about 10 years now. And I walk through um, the opening pearly gates and <laughs> come into, I didn't realize you had a storefront here. Yeah, it's the only one. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's immaculately clean. Yeah. And there is a another store there that sells very affectionately to me, band music, sheet yes. music. I grew up I wanted to be the music man, okay. Professor Harold Hill, and uh, I studied music education in college, and so seeing sheet music in a day and age where that's somewhat rare was really nice and refreshing, yeah. and classical music being played over the airwaves, I just thought it was like, ah, well, I could stay here for a while. It is very cool, and I've yeah. only been here almost three years. When I first started, the store was a very tiny. It was just a little storefront mm. that they had when the sales force was right behind it, then they've been expanding like crazy ever since I got here basically, and then opened up that giant 14,000 square foot store and made the whole Huge. place. So they want, they want people to come and see Sweetwater. That's why they built that place, plus everything else you'll yep. see at, when you take the tour a little bit later. Yep, it's and it really cool. is very inviting. It's very it warm. I mean, it, people greet you when you come in and oh, yeah. a handshake and eyeballs with real people. I you mean, that's, that makes a statement. I think that's pretty great. Cool. For those of you who may not know Ben and his music right now, uh, your band is blowing up. It's been doing that for a while, but your music I have to tell you, when doing the research and checking out your music and uh, listening to it all, your music is really memorable right out of the gate. Man, thanks. Chorus goes by. I'm singing along to the chorus. That's the second time around. Oh, that's, right. the, that's so it's the very idea. cool. So congratulations on the you. tunes you're making and the success of your band. But like I like to do with all the artists that I interview, let's do a little quick history lesson if we sure. can. Where you started, where that's you came fun. from, and... Uh, what brought music into your life? Well, let's see, I was born at a very young age and music was always around. My mom's a musician. Um, one of her claims to fame is accompanying Broadway auditions okay. out in New York. Right. My dad's a pastor, so I was always combining those two, music and being up on stage. And my parents would just throw me up at church and sing all the time. You know, youth group, my youth pastor taught me how to play guitar and okay. bass. And so that was your first instrument then, guitar? Uh, actually, my first instrument was piano. Oh, okay. But then moved to trumpet in fifth grade. I, but vocally, I was always singing. Okay, cool. There was music always in the house, always. And uh, so I wanted to be, uh, I didn't realize it, but I, I wanted to be a musician my whole life. But I, I, it was such a fragile dream that you didn't want to talk about it or sit, because I felt like if I did, I would lose it. Okay. And, but I got through college, I studied music education. I actually went to college and, and I was going to be an elementary ed teacher, but my trumpet professor, he said, you need to switch your major. You are a musician. That's what you are. And so I did. And I went to music education, which I kind of always wanted to do, but I thought I wasn't good enough, honestly. Okay. I mean, my band director in high school has played for Maynard Ferguson. And I mean, first chair at University of Wisconsin. And I just didn't think I could do it. And uh, But secretly, I wanted to be in the CSO, you know, Chicago Symphony Orchestra and play trumpet classical music. And um, I just took his advice and switched my majors and then quickly realized that I loved it. And I loved learning all the instruments in the orchestra. I had to teach them up to a fifth grade level wow. You know, after I graduated. And I had almost a thousand kids in my senior year, um, uh, you know, my internship, my teaching, you know, and I just loved it. But when I graduated, I, I was too ingrained in pop music right. on a guitar and I just got, enamored with recording music. I was in a band in college called Stained Glass with my brother and my sister. We toured around the country in a van. And it was the groundwork foundation for what I'm doing now. Right. And, you know, three minute pop songs that everybody can sing after the first chorus, like you said. Right. And that was the goal. And I, I'm now producing young artists. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I built the recording arts program and the recording studio at Judson University in Chicago for the very purpose of having a place to work and also building up a community of young artists that sure. are like-minded that needed a place to record their songs and didn't know anything about it. And I started on GarageBand, you know, just pressing buttons and seeing what worked, right. you know. And so I had all that background in music theory and ear training and sight singing and, and so it became 
to the point where I like to produce young artists as well. And even though I didn't know what I was always doing, right. I just we had fun together and we figured it out. And it led to the band. And uh, after I got married, and we got signed after a song called "Should Have Been Me." It was written at a camp uh, here uh, up in Michigan. And and uh, it's about six years later now. We've been a band almost 13 years. And it takes that long sometimes sure. to get going. Oh, I know that. You know, and it's all about the song, so you just have to keep going. So I have a lot of questions to ask you. So what was it like being in a band with your brother and having that family dynamic in the music you were creating? Well, it was um, our former bass player, I think he said it the best. It's our greatest strength and our greatest weakness. Okay. And you can, um, you can really have that natural dynamic that you can't find anywhere else. I mean, it's brothers. Sure. You know? Um, and it was really fun. Like, I toured with my brother since he was a teenager, you know, and it wasn't always fun, but it was a lot of fun, too. I mean, he makes me laugh harder than anybody. He's just so funny because just the way he does. And you know, there's that music connection thing that you don't, there's a lot of things that you can do unspoken. Did you guys have similar tastes? Oh, for sure. Okay. In fact, he has great taste in music, and he's a great songwriter. Okay. So we would love to write together. Um, we've had our, all of our biggest hits are my brother and I. Oh, cool. Which is really cool. You know? So I'm sure that makes your, your mom and dad proud. Too. Very proud. Yes. yes, very proud. Very proud. Very cool. Now you do contemporary Christian music. Do you like that mon that, that title? Do you do you care? I not really. I because mean because that's what you do. You seem you're very proud of that fact I'm and, very you, proud and you of it. and you yes. you know you uh, yes. you let I mean, it be known. Yeah. There's a few ways to call it, but I mean that's my conviction and what I love. Sure. I grew up on Christian music. I, I love, you know, mainstream music as well, but Christian music for me is more than just a genre. It's a calling. It's a conviction. It's what I love. It's sure. what I know, right. and what I feel like is has value, you know, in eternity. And so that's why I do it. And did you know that when you were first starting and knowing that you wanted to be a professional musician and start a band and all that kind of stuff, were you writing songs in that vein from the very beginning? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. My relationship with the Lord was very strong, and I'll, my some of the best advice I ever got from uh, any songwriters was from my hero, Joel Hansen, a, a band called PFR. He said, just write what you know. Okay. And that's what I did. Sure. That's what I knew. And so, you know, using scripture and God's word to, you know, put into these songs is a big deal for our audiences. Sure. And that's what they want. They're not coming, they can go to, you know, mainstream music for other things, but they come to Christian music because of the, the lyric, the content, you know, God's word being, you know, the focal point. Right. So that's what we do. And we just turn the amps to 11 while we do it and have nice. fun. Of course. <laughs> so you said you got signed early on. Mm -hmm. Now, is the process, being in the Christian side of music, in that, in that field, was being signed and doing the record company thing and the business side of it any different than the mainstream stuff that you've that you saw other people doing? I'm sure it would be. My brother was in a mainstream band pretty okay. that did very well. Okay. and. Uh, he said there were, there were a lot of similarities, okay. but the type of people that you work with is completely different. Right. And the motives of which you're working for is right. completely different. But yeah, a lot of the same business things. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to make money off of this. Right. It's a business. Well, you have a family too. Yeah. You've you, you got to yeah. support. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for us, it really comes down to the song. Unless you have great songs, it just right. doesn't matter. You'll just be on the road forever. But great songs will open the doors for you. Definitely. So we always try to, I always try to focus on that. Very cool. Now, how big is the band, the core band you have now when you're out playing live? Four guys. Okay. Yep. Because you're, the reason I asked is because, again, in doing the research and listening to your music and watching stuff online, you have some very lush recordings. Well, thank you. And they sound amazing. Thank you. How hard is it to pull that off live? I know you guys do acoustic versions and stuff like that, sure. pared down stuff when you need to. But when you play live, are you playing the tracks? Do you, or do you have the full landscape of sound in some Absolutely. of the bigger live shows? You know, it, it, some people don't. They think that's cheating, but I actually think that's part of the creative process. I mean, that's what we did on the record. Well, and that's what they make the gear for, too. Yes, I mean, it's, that's it's what it's there right for. there, yeah, and sure. it's easy these days, and it helps me be inspired to sing sure. when it sounds like the record that we intended to make in the first place. Right. You know, so for me, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, to come up with, you know, four guys and tracks. If I had more players, that'd be great. Right. Um, but it's not always necessary for, you know, a pop rock band. And, right. Um, but it does, like the strings, you know, that we have, like some of those I even created on my iPhone GarageBand. 
and they showed up on the record, and that's what's still there in my ears playing every night. And right. it's it's kind of fun to be able for me to think back to the audience doesn't always know, right? You know, they don't know always if you're singing high C or drinking it. You know, <laughs> so sometimes you just got to do the things that inspire you to help create that moment that they're connected to. Sure. And sometimes tracks do that. Very cool. This record that you just released last year, 2.0, mm -hmm. some very cool songs. The song Bulletproof is, uh, I know you're, a lot of songs are charting and doing really well for you. Now that tune to me, I see people making comments, sounds like Maroon 5, sounds like this, sounds like that. I get a little Bruno Mars vibe sure. out of it and stuff yeah. like that. Very funky. I have a, this is a kind of a stupid question. No the bass stupid line, questions. The bass line in that track is super funky. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And is your bass player, can he play it like that record? He can play it like the record. <laughs> yes, he can. That's a killer bass line on that record. Very yes. cool stuff. Are you working with a big team of producers? Are you doing it all yourself? I mean, I know you have other songwriters helping you write some of these tunes and craft them, but when you're in the studio, how big is the production team? It's different for every song, and I think it's because I, it's, I think it's wise that way. Okay. You know, depending on the song, you have different you know, writers and people. Sometimes the writer of a song should be the producer, depending right. on if they are a producer. Sometimes you need to give it to somebody else to interpret it more. Mm -hmm. So on the last record, I think there were seven producers. Okay. And I loved that. Not only is it relationally fun, but um, you get different sonic you know, yeah. variations within right. the same record. And they all meld together. And as long as you have somebody who's the leader, uh, I, in our world, that's me, you know, helping piece it together to make it sound like it's part of the same work. Right. Uh, it's just really fun. And so, yeah, I mean, whether it's me producing songs or I, for Citizen Way, I always love to work with other producers. I want their take on things. You know, that way I'm free to be an artist. Right. When I'm producing other people, you know, it's different. But for me, I really enjoy it. And you work with your friends, too. And you just come up and you have fun in the studio and it shows up on your record and people respond to that. And uh, you just always try to keep it simple. It's singable, scriptural, and simple. And then lots and lots of fun. You know, so the That's three great. S's and an F. Nice. <laughs> so you're here at Sweetwater. We sell gear. We're all about gear at this place, right? And so, uh, what are your instruments of choice these days? What are you playing? What do you like to bang around on? Well, actually, you said Sweetwater is all about gear. I actually would, I would go maybe even a step further and say, I think Sweetwater is all about people. I think you guys are just awesome at that. And that's why I go for the gear, is because the people on the other end of the telephone are helping me through all the processes of whatever questions I have. They never make me feel like I'm dumb. Right. for asking or that I didn't know in the first place. But um, so props to you guys. And the gear wise, I mean, it's gear is gear is gear. I mean, I mean do you write on acoustic guitar, piano, oh, electric? I mean, anything and everything? Anything that gets me the inspiration. And anything. Do, iPads. Right. You know, do whatever. your songs normally start from <laughs> a, you know, a riff or like a lyric maybe, a lyric idea to, give, to put Both. you in a direction? Both. Whatever that gold, little gold nugget of is like, <gasps> that! And then it just, right. sometimes it'll be the title, like Bulletproof was the title I'd held for six weeks. Okay. I knew it needed to be a song called Bulletproof about the arm of God, Ephesians 6, and it had to be Billie Jean. <laughs> Billie Jean. Yeah. And you know, the right producers in the right room at the right time with the right idea, that's what you get. And the gear then becomes the tools you use. And right. so the stuff that's really accessible, for me it's few as buttons as possible. Okay. You know, my guitar has a volume and a tone. If I had my ways, my amps would have a volume knob. Mm -hmm. Turn it to 11 and just, that's all I need. And that's what I do on stage now. Right. And for me, I'm not a tweaker. I'm a get to the main course and then formulate around it. And Sweetwater is great for that because everything that you need, you have options for. Sure. And whether you're a tweaker or whether you are a get to the song and just turn it up louder. <laughs> Like me, right. you guys have it. And so it's easy for me to go and... What I like about Sweetwater is it's really easy to go, oh, I didn't know I could try that with this because there's a lot of options that you guys naturally pair with. But cr creatively, I think it's really awesome the way, what you guys do because you show pictures of stuff. And I actually, if I buy a guitar, it has to look good on stage. I don't care if it plays good. It has to look good. <laughs> right. You know, and so for me, the that's the idea with gear is that there's a personal connection to it. Sure. And you have to kind of, it's an extension of who you are. And it's great that you guys just offer so much because you really help get the range of the artists and the people that are out there because it is, at the end of the day, all about people and what they are trying to say. You're doing a good job of it. Thanks.
You're welcome. We do what we can, and we do have a great team here, I you must do. admit. I've been here for three years, and the amount of employees has just exploded since I've been here. Mm -hmm. Over 1,100 people working here now, and everybody has the same goal. So it is, you're right when you say it's true. what you're saying about Sweetwater. It's, it's a cool place to work. So now, are you touring a lot now? I know you're traveling from Michigan down to Nashville, but are yeah. you touring a lot with the band? Lots yes. of gigs? Yep. Uh, July is absolutely jam-packed. Okay. And the fall is, um, we just got a Christmas tour. Nice. Which will be fun. We're going to release a Christmas single, hopefully this Christmas as well. Um, and yes, we're looking for the spring now. You know, we book about six to eight months out. Um, I'm always thankful for every opportunity I get to play. My mom would often tell me, she's like, Ben, just be thankful for every gig you get, because it might be your last. Sure. You know, so whatever it is, whether it's 150 dates a year or five, you know, as a solo artist or, you know, helping my daughter sing wherever, because she does, I'm just thankful that I get a chance to play and sing and connect with people. So, yes, we are very busy and I'm thankful. Very cool. And how are you balancing the family life? Do they get to come on tour with you every once in a while and yes. hang? And yes. I bring the girls with me as much as possible, even up on stage to sing with me. Nice. In fact, I'm helping my daughter Ava record her first album. Very nice. For her 10th birthday. Uh, but yeah, I, I really have a goal. It's a family. That's one of the things I love about Christian music is it's very family-centered. And um, it's not always easy. I, I say no to things at home like TV. Uh, just so that I can, I'm forced to focus on my family. I want my girls to know that their dad is present and available. Sure. You know, whenever they need him. And so, and my wife too. And so, otherwise I have no business being up on stage singing about what we do. Right. You know, so, it's a whole... So you walk it like you talk it, basically. Couldn't have said it better. Very nice. All right, so now, what is in the future for your band and for yourself? New records already started? Do you have a like a ten year plan? What's what's going on? That's like that? great. Yes, I I'm so much a thirty thousand feet down kind of guy, right. and so I'm always getting my manager looking at me like, wait, we can't do that just yet, because you know we're we're gonna get to the next step. So um, yes, uh, always new music. I'm always helping younger artists, you know, produce their songs and their records. I was just listening to a master on the way over here okay. of a young artist from Minnesota. I really love developing young talent. It's just really fun for me. Um, and helping them in love be very blunt and say, that doesn't work, but this does. Did you realize you're really good at that? Right. So the same with us, uh, developing you know, our players, our, our team unity. It's really important for me to have everybody on the same page, in the same direction, on the right ship at the right time. Otherwise, it just falls apart. Sure. And you're out there and you don't know why and you forget where you are and you just want to go home and you just it doesn't work. And so for me, always the future is okay. What's best for our family? What's best? Where is the Lord leading us? What are we doing? Why? Does it matter? And figuring out how to get to those details. And in the studio, writing new songs with people that are better than we are. That's how you get great songs. You know, you, you just write with people who are more experienced, who are better than you, or who love what you're doing, and you can kind of find that new thing that nobody's done before. And it's it's not as technical as it is inspirational and you know, supernatural. It's just you get into the uh, this recording studio, which we're doing right now, you have an idea and run with it. Right. And you just see what happens and you, you literally take a dive off the edge of the cliff and figure out how to fly on the way down. And that, I think, is what music is. And yeah. for me, that's one of the most fun things about it. And I'm going to keep doing it till I have no more wings. Yeah. Very cool, man. Thanks so much for coming here to Sweetwater and sharing all this great information with us and, uh, and your time. And you know, have fun on the tour. They Thank have you. A great restaurant and diner here. Get Look some food. forward to it. You need a coffee, whatever you need. You need to see the doctor, get a haircut, whatever you want. I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> we have it here. So thanks so much for coming. Good luck with everything in the future and your family and the band. And I just wish you all the best. Man, thanks, Nick. All right. Appreciate it, buddy. Pleasure. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Our thanks to Nick DiVirgilio and Ben Calhoun for a great interview. I hope you enjoyed that. And thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.